In today's video I have this Sony 5-disc CD player which is a CDP-C325 I had to already pull it to bits to put a power cord on it because it didn't have one this was just a parts one I bought so it doesn't seem to do much it does light up on the front tray opens and closes I think we've got to lift that up a bit to get it to do it but when you load it in we're not getting any reading of disc Lasers not flicking up and down. So that's your first indication. So I guess we can try the old wind it back. See if it at least centers itself, because it should center and then, then start searching. And it doesn't even do that. Looks like the laser could do with the clean as well. What's this got a KSS 240? It's one of the later ones. Well, relatively later compared to some of these things. So basically we got no operation from the mech. At least these Sony is nice and easy to work on. The bottom comes right off, so I think we might pull the mech out. I'm not sure which end's easiest to unplug, but I'll take that end out. I think it's just this screw and a clip and the whole thing comes out in your hand which is brilliant design much better than some of the ones out there so that just lifts off and it should be a matter of just pressing that backwards Ugh, slippery grease all over it that doesn't help that's a little tight fitting in this one Oh, there's a spring as well. I forgot some of that. So we can basically get rid of the main thing for now. Now we'll have a look at this mech. It may well have a mechanical issue or something. Could be the motors failed or something, which is pretty rare, but it'd be pretty rare for one of these mechs to have an actual electronic issue with it, but it's possible. A lot of the time it's best just to get this board out of the way. So we can check it electronic, check the, not electronically, the mechanically. So one screw and you've got to unsolder the two motors. And the laser seems to move around all right on its own. I can wind the gear, but we'll check that the motor's all intact and running things. Oh, I pushed down with a bit too much force on the solder sucker and broke it. <laughs> See, it might still be operational. It's finally disintegrated. Okay, so we want to release one into this. I think that's the easy one to get into. That all seems to operate all right. Now check this little switch, I guess. Make sure that looks like it's still intact, which it is. Because that being open is what tells this thing to operate. I think these motors are only a few volts. I'll have to see if I can run the motor by hand as such. Don't know which direction it's going to go, so I'll just briefly. Yeah, that seems to work. Reverse the voltage, and we should be able to get it back again. Yep, so that's all fine. So why isn't the machine, when I mean, this rises up, so it must also know that this mech has risen into place, I guess. Or at least should have. And what runs these? It's probably that little BAIC there. Which looks fine, but that doesn't tell you much. No caps on the board or anything that could have failed. So this part, I mean, I, it's very rare. I don't know if I've even had a CD player where that didn't run, especially a Sony. I don't think, to be honest, I've ever seen one where the laser wouldn't center itself again. It's usually the one thing that does work. I 
think you've got to usually best to wind these lasers back a bit before we put the board in because you've got that switch sticking up and it tends to hit the laser if the laser's right in. Oh, I better, better plug this back in before I forget to. Easy to, when you mess around like this, it's easy to forget things like that and put everything back together. Yeah, if I can get the thing in there. that's in far enough. The problem is these little plastic bits tend to push back in as you put the connector in. Yeah that's it. You can usually tell you can see the sort of marks on the little silver bits on the end of the ribbon cable where the contacts are pressed in and if they're showing then you haven't got it back on enough. Uh, screw, might as well screw that back down. And yeah, if, these, if the front of the board doesn't sit properly, it's usually that switch is pressing on the laser when it's right at the centre. Because the laser sort of bumps the other way when it slides in, but if you put it in with a laser already there, then of course the switch hasn't been nudged to the side by the laser and it clashes with it. Oh, well, that was worth a quick check just to see if there was anything obvious there. Pretty sure that laser needs a clean, it's pretty dirty. And may even need a clean down inside it. Oh, come on, Metho. Little bit came off. I usually get that platter thing a clean too, because they are a collector of sticky glue and stuff occasionally. Don't know how they get built up on them, but they do. Must be stuff on the CDs, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna put this back. Uh, which way around did it go, that? Yeah, that's it, but the pin always goes into this big greasy gear. Because that's what lifts it up and down. That's the sort of like master cam of the CD player. I think that end just sits there and we clip that one under there. I guess I could leave the screw off the, the bit that holds that in for now just until we see whether we need to get this out again or not. So I'm not sure what actually tells the mechanism that it's lifted up in place because that could be another thing here that's... Just make sure that tray's in the right spot. That's causing issues. Weird. The displays come up with just the, the boxes that the tracks are listed in. So have I got something out of whack here? Oh, did I put that in there? Yeah, interesting. So yeah, that's all I'm getting on the display, that little box of where the tracks are normally listed once it's read the table of contents. So I've plugged the mech back in. Maybe I need to Wind a bit of this stuff by hand. Let's just, there's a big gear under here. We'll drop the mech down. And yeah, we can eject. And then there's of course a separate motor here for the carousel. And I forget, I think this is, there must be some sort of optical sensor or something on the carousel, I would think. Oh, that's reset something. But no, no coming in of the laser. Or should the laser detect a disc? That's the other possibility, is that the laser is turning on, I'm looking for a disc. Can't see any light there. Obviously don't look in the laser, just on a bit of an angle. I think some units used to there turn the laser on just to see if there was an actual disc. I suspect this one might be one of them, because it's that's how it seems to detect no disc. Oops, gotta be careful when you bump the mech. The laser's not even sounding, so I wonder if the laser's not running. Well, that, 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 does it need to first reset to the center before it? Hmm, 
This is an interesting one. I might have to check another Sony 5 disc, which I have somewhere, and see what it does. Because I forget with these. So I've just had a look on the actual, there's a switch here, which goes into that sort of master cam thing, which flicks from side to side. If you saw, you might have to, I had to reposition the gear a bit here to, to get it to actually come out, but that is a potential for having some sort of issue. I guess that probably counts each disc position or something like that. We've got another piece here. Which looks like another sort of switch. Can't actually see where it is or what it does, but I guess maybe from the top. Ah, oh, we're in the up position, which we don't want. Got to drop the disc before we can rotate anything, but no, you can't see anything from above. Not unless you take the whole platter out, which isn't hard to do on these normally. I don't know if we have to remove that. But, it's only a single screw normally, and this will come out. Maybe we have to eject it to make it easier. Oh, that's not gonna help anyway, is it? No, see that one's in the way. Maybe I have to take that off. Which should be simple. That's all we want on disc two. I don't know if it matters if we know we're on disc two or not. We've got a, oh, we've got these things hanging onto it. I get a feeling it is something to do with you have to eject it. Well, I think the, oh, no, that's not going to work either. You must have to take all this out then. Give me enough room. Uh, maybe it will if I take this take this bit off. I think I can undo that screw. And that screw. And then we should be able to unclip the arm. Oh, and I've got a spring. You can stick that to the magnet. That's it. That'll be free. I only want to look at what we've got here. Oh, so there's an optical sensor there. These were so reliable back in the day, I don't think I've really pulled all this stuff to bits before. No, you do have to take the front off, I think, to get it fully out, which is a bit of a pain. I'll slide the whole tray out and release it. Yeah, so we've got an optical sensor, and I assume we've got something around the edge of this. Oh yeah, we've got a thing under here, one, two, that's got two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, yes, yeah, so that's how it knows which disc position it's in, this one I assume has just one, yeah, so that's how it knows what number disc it's on, the amount of pulses going to that, what's this other switch thing? We can't see anything under there. It looked like from below you could see something, but you can't. So it's not the tray I was looking at. Okay, so we don't really need to get the tray out at all. We've got to get it back under these. Also, I'm too old. Don't know whether it matters whether I go on too. I assume it would re recount and reset itself just by what the sensor finds next. Or as it rotates, it just reads the next one. Sony, how's am I supposed to get that in there? Oh, there we go. That went up straight under then. Where's the stupid thing? I can't even see it from here. There we go. That's a bit of a fiddly thing. And not much use for the bits, but at least I learned something. I knew there was some sort of sensor there. It's like I said, been so long since I had to fix one and there wasn't much need to pull most of these bits to bits. Now where's, oh the screw for that one's in it. <laughs> I going to say, where'd the screw go, but it's still in it. So 
that has to, I take the screw has to come out I think to get it back in. We've got to slot it into the gear part there. Such a nice simple design these things. Ah, except that I just moved it. Why won't that go in? See, so give it a compliment and it does something to annoy you straight away. Greasy hands there, so I've got to better just clean that. Won't have to do it anyway. But just the grease on your hands, you don't want that on belts and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if this issue is due to it sitting around rather than anything else. Honestly, ooh, we haven't gone in though, have we? So that's interesting. Yeah, so now it's got an issue there. Oh, is that because I'm sitting on the bench here? It doesn't always drop properly on when I'm sitting here for some reason. Oh, I've got a terminal block underneath, probably doesn't help. Ooh, something made a funny noise. It's over on disc two. Yeah, it definitely resets itself. Hmm. Spring on the post. And, and that doesn't really have to fit anywhere in particular up there. Clip that on. Screw that back down. I think that should end up somewhere far enough down that it just sort of sits, just clamps the disc. I'm going too high. You should see it sort of sit down a little bit on the. Oh, yeah, that's it. When the when the magnet bit touches on the platter, you then want to drop this a little bit more so it can spin freely. Not too much, I guess, but you can tell where that, yeah, we're right at the top, so we're somewhere around the middle of the, although we're on a go, that's not moved, I think. Probably on about level with, yeah, sitting somewhere in the middle. Or am I a bit too high now? Although we all have the thickness of the disc there anyway. Yeah, that's probably about right. Put the other screw back in. Yes, yeah, so I might just have to check one more. Check inside another one of these to see whether it switches the laser or not. I get a feeling these ones may have. I mean, it's certainly looking like it's. There's no other way I can tell if a disc is in there. So that laser should light up. But that's even rarer that you don't have a laser that lights up. But I still would have thought you'd. So I don't know if this tells that, that it can't light up until it's in the centre. So it should, I think, still reset to the centre. Let's try that. I think we've got to at least pretend to open and close it before it'll reset. And look for a disc. Go to disc two. Check if I had that in the right spot. That should rotate freely, yeah. Got the arm at the right height, but yeah, no, it's not detecting. I suspect for some reason the laser doesn't seem to come on, which is rare. I mean, it's possible we've finally got a faulty laser that doesn't come on. I've yet to see one ever. I can't think what else. Everything mechanically seems to work. The strange thing is it doesn't have a very good looking connection to that switch. I guess it's the other thing I should check is that switch is actually operating. Because that may be related to whether the laser can come on or not.
that says it's there. I might resolder that anyway because it doesn't look very good. Uh, power's off in that. I mean, it's possible we've got faulty electronics here somewhere. Be very rare, but I think if it, that switch is at least shut, we should get the the laser to come on. But how does this thing? Is the other question. How does this know when it's in its up position? Is that related to switches here? Is what I'm thinking. It's quite possible it's that that switch there is not working properly or something because that should probably flick a signal into the microprocessor or something the other microprocessor here to say disk up maybe that's the only other thing I can think of is we still you know we haven't got laser because we haven't got initialization of laser and I wish I knew what this other connector went to I may have to pull the drawer out and have a look What would these, oh these would be the tray in out switches. So what's this other, but how does it know? It counts the thing, that winds to a bit. Because I think this, if you keep winding it, just drop, lifts it up and then down again, is it? Oh no, that does the eject. So we come back in and I'm stuck. Why doesn't the tray come back in and then ooh, oh something's not happy, it doesn't like working upside down I don't think. Possible something's catching somewhere. And okay, now it's winding up. So how does it know? Oh it's reached the end. Oh, so maybe it's that other switch is. Oh yeah, okay, that switch is probably tray out. Or tray in and laser up. Now we've hit an end. But that's not trying to wind any further as far as I know. So the switch must work, but then is there another switch? Because at times this has got to just wind down to that. Stop there somewhere, and then this starts rotating. That finds its position. This then winds back up. Oh, it's supposed to, I haven't got that quite in the right spot. That hits an end. So I guess the other thing I need to check is does that motor stop rotating? Oh, we're, but see, now we're back to that display is blank. So I wonder if there is a switch issue. That would make some sense that the microprocessor, let's reset it. No, we still got blank display. Last time I tweaked that and it came on again. Yeah, so this, that motor's not running at all. I wonder if that's an issue with a switch. If I measure that switch quickly. It's got a bunch of terminals, three middle terminals to ground. That one's 1.2, that's 1.3. So that would suggest it's not actually at an end. That's because I'm not at an end. So right, let's run the, run the laser up and into home. That one is closed. So in between, I guess they're both open. And then this, we're gonna to have to wind the whole tray out. Tray's out. Yeah, other one's flicked. But what I don't know is what this other thing is.
nothing. Let's wind that in. That's clamped. That switch is activated. That switch is also activated at that point. What happens if we just wind that to down? That's still activated. Start opening the tray. That is gone. Close the tray. Still not there. Start winding the mech up. And that seems to come in when the mech is lifting. As soon as we get to the door is opening. Some point there. And it's gone, I think. And it's back. So yeah, as soon as it gets the drawer in, that's not left, we get that other switch closing. So we've got something weird going on here, and then this display goes weird. Oh, it's back, it's reset. But still no operation, so I wonder if we've got some weird microprocessor fault or something on the main board. Pretty sure that is not even trying to light. But the fact that everything here is operating as it should, you would think the micro was happy. Oh, something just... Was it just because I got to the end? Something just ran when it shouldn't. Was it this motor? Are those switch contacts fully closed or are they just high resistance? Or I wouldn't be surprised if we've got a switch with tarnished contacts or something. No, that's super low and low. That's open circuit. That's super low. No idea. Okay, I just plug the mechanism out of my CD player in there and it actually does, it should center and then start doing a focus search as per normal it doesn't just light up a laser and do nothing else but yeah when i put this one in here this actually seems to work it'll center when it rises up the other one we'll start searching the laser comes on well, i haven't actually checked it this one but i assume it comes on yep lasers on focus search it happens but I did actually bump the cable on this one and the thing started running around. So that's one other thing I should just check is what can fail in these, sometimes is these cables. So let's put my cable into this unit just in case, because yeah, like I say, very rare for the electronics to fail on these things, but not unheard of. Ah yeah, it's the cable. The laser's now searching. I bet if we can get a disc to stay in here long enough to clamp it. Oop. Bingo. Yeah, I thought because I bumped the cable and it did something, I thought that's probably dodgy. And sure enough, put my cable in there, runs fine. We've got, yeah, disc running, so it's just a lot of use. It's probably caused this cable to fail or. Someone's damaged it at some stage. Can't see anything obvious on the end pieces. I might get a magnifier and go over it, but oh, at least that was always handy having another one because you can just swap bits. But again, it's usually the mechanical part that fails if anything does. It could be anything on here really, but most likely it'll be one of these ends that's failed, I would assume. Possibly one of the crimps, because these little pins are sort of crimped on. I cannot see a single thing that looks bad on this. Double check that other end, but... Everything looks pretty good. 
there's no sign of a cut in the cable anything like that no bad little tongues on the connectors or anything where they slot in now that one end of that cable doesn't seem to have it's like the connector hasn't bit into it very well it's almost like it's too thin or something but one end's got plenty of you can see where the connector it plugged into as well and truly scraped into the metal bits while the other end you can just make it out but very light it's like it's barely connected but it's still probably enough I guess yeah the very end one doesn't look like it's scraped much at all yeah well at least we know it's just a cable fault I don't know if you can get these cables anymore but they are the sort of thing that will play up in things especially if this has had a lot of up and down operations so which is the one that doesn't look like it's had much use at end I think let's see how that feels in there does that feel like it's biting in Seems pretty tight. I don't know what you could do to try and fix one of these. I guess I could measure out the pins. Yeah, we've gone back to that display doing weird stuff. I guess we could measure each pin on it and just see if there's continuity there would be the thing. Or should I actually do it with it plugged in even? It looks a lot like someone's resoldered each end of this cable. So whether someone's had a go at trying to fix it, I guess I could ideally maybe measure it from circuit to circuit which you know if you if you don't have another cable to try that would be the way to do it is just do a continuity test of the whole thing well straight away we don't seem to have any connection am I doing it right? Seems to be those two end ones aren't. Oh, that one's dodgy. Can't be that many out, surely. Wow, what the hell is going on here? So the fourth one in. They can't possibly be that bad. Wow, I'm only half of them don't work. How's that possible? Wow, that wasn't what I was expecting. I thought maybe one or two would be out. But like a whole bunch of them doesn't seem right. Unless I'm not making good contact with the solder or something. That's why I'm going to pull it out and actually try it pin to pin. If I can. Actually, I've got some solder or something. Let's just flatten that down. That is as open as open can be. Same with the second one, that's exactly what the CD player was saying when it was in there. Then we've got a good one. I think another good one. They're, they're open. Oh, what up? No, it is. Which one is that? The fifth? Fourth. Fifth, I think. Weird. Could it be a coating on the actual metal or something? I can't actually tell which one I'm on now. It's six. Yeah, that's number six. Seven. Eight's good. It's exactly the results I was getting. Nine's no good. Really? They can't use many of these connections then. Am I on the right one? I think I am. We are 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8 in. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6, yeah that's the right one. If I'm not mistaken, I mean how can so many be out? 
That should be six in. That's insane. You can't have that many connections. <laughs> it's like a third of them are actually any good, I think. Yeah, that fourth one's out, the third one's good. Something major has gone wrong with one of these end crimp on things. The second one's out. The first one's good. My god. And it doesn't look a single bit like anything's wrong with it. So we've either got a. Oh, I guess one thing I didn't look at is the opposite side. Maybe I should be looking at the back of this and see if there's like a. Oh, it's down here. Now you're looking probably this end because that's the one that's bent the most. Of course, the other one's held flat. It's got the white plastic thing. This end, which is the one that moves, you can actually see where it's folded or thereabouts. What well, looks like little cracks in it. Yeah, I think that silver. Um, tracks that are there, I think they're broken. Yeah, the other one's just as bad. It doesn't have any sort of protection for it at that end. That one, I can actually see what looks like some damage there, even. That's uh, just the way the glue's gone on it. I think it's got little ripply... Yeah, the silver stuff's been rippled up a bit, but... Yeah, it's fine going in under the connectors. This one, though, yeah, this end... See, someone's bent that, I think. I don't think that's meant to have been... have that crease in it. Unless the machine's done it. Yeah, there's definitely signs of cracking and stuff in the silver track. Oh, well, at least I know what it is. The question is whether I can get another one of those to fix it. And that was only a $5 thing. At least I've probably got a good laser assembly as a spare for mine. Not that I ever use mine anymore, but... Pinflex Mark II. That's probably the Sony part number right there, 1-694-003. I'll have to look see whether we can get these anymore. They may be available as a spare part as an aftermarket or something, because these must be a common issue if that one's gone, or somewhat common. I'll look into it. OK, it looks like there's a couple of places which look to be probably the same website with different branding that do sell these for about 10 euros plus post I guess but I don't really know the company or whether it's legit or not that's about the only place comes up with this model or this cable part number that 1694003-11 looks exactly the same and it's for us I think for a, a car CD player so that's another place they possibly exist so I guess I could keep an eye out for an old Sony car stacker. But yeah, how many would you have to buy to find if you've got the right one or not? The other option would be to actually... It's a shame there's so many leads out because you could just solder like a bit of ribbon cable or something between the two. So if you're not too fussed about it, you're not going to use it a lot. That would be another option is just actually repair it. I was almost wondering whether you couldn't shove something in, jam it into these connectors into each hole. But that's probably a bit too much messing around. But I mean, 18 connections is quite a few. Some, if I could find the manual, they're probably not all used anyway. But if it was just a couple out, I'd probably just solder a couple of wires there. But since like, you know, two thirds of them or something are missing, it's quite a job. So I might just put this thing back together and keep an eye out for another cable. If one turns up, it does. If it doesn't, then I could just pull that laser mech out of this thing and chuck the rest, I think, is probably about all it's good for because normally these are super reliable, very rare to have any issues other than to do with the spin motor or the laser itself, which you'd expect to go. Given enough time, these motors were notorious for playing up. These little RF, whatever they were, that RF310s or something, they used them in all sorts of different brands and stuff. But for the time being, I think I'll just put this thing back together. I might even just stick that cable to the top of it. So I know what I'm looking for in the future. And yeah, like I say, not a big loss for $5. If there's a good laser and stuff in there, if I ever get back to using a CD, I'd probably get my money's worth out of just pinching that out of it. But anyway, thanks for watching.